Good evening. Welcome to my late night spook show here in the Horror Metal Channel. I'm Hellhound, and this is uh, Hellhound's Loathsome Lore, episode 30. Um, yeah, I'm really tired, so <laughs> I figured I'd just do a quick video uh, sharing with you guys uh, some of the recent uh, things that I got. Some of my um, um, recent uh, acquirements. Um, and then I probably got to take a nap, so... <laughs> Alright, let's get right to it. Um, well, the first thing I got was... Um, the Blind Dead Collection, which if you're not unfamiliar with what that is, it's a tetralogy of uh, films. The four uh, movie franchises, a series um, of Spanish horror films uh, that came out in the 70s, directed by uh, Armando D'Asorio. Um, really good stuff. They're very creepy. I love the, uh, the uh, gothic atmosphere and imagery. Um, really uh, great suspense and stuff. The acting is, you know... Eh, not always that great, and uh, some of the special effects are a little dated, but I think they're very creepy nonetheless. But anyway, they consist of the first film, Tombs of the Blind Dead, also known as Night of Terror. Um, yeah, as I said, Spanish horror film, uh, directed by Amano de Osorio, and this is the first one, Tombs of the Blind Dead. Um, this is followed by Return of the Evil Dead, which was way before uh, the Sam Raimi uh, Evil Dead trilogy came out. Um, also known as Return of the Blind Dead, which probably makes more sense, but um, I like this title, so uh, it's fine. Yeah, this is the second film in the series, and this is probably the goriest and most gruesome, I'd say. I think it's the bloodiest. Um, I believe that um, each of these DVDs come with the English version and the Spanish version. I think the Spanish version is uh, uncut. They're a little longer than the English version, and I prefer to watch movies uh, subtitles anyway with their original language. Um, sometimes if I'm just, if I know I'm not going to pay much attention to them and I'm going to like be doing other things, just kind of have them on in the background, I'll watch them in English, uh, the dub. But, you know, a lot of times the dubbing is really cheesy, as you, I'm sure you already know. Um, so it depends on what I'm in the mood for. If I kind of want to laugh a little bit, I'll watch the dubbed version with the kind of crappy <laughs> voices. Uh, if I don't want to take it more seriously, I'll watch the original uh, language version with subtitles. Um, and it's, it's uncut, too, the original Spanish version, so I prefer that, of course. Uh, the third film is The Ghost Galleon, which is really awesome. Most of the movie takes place in a, um, an abandoned uh, ship, like a really old like ghost ship, essentially. Um, and um, the main premise of the series, they're not really connected in any way. They're not all related to each other. The various things I don't follow up. It, 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 um, it involves the Knights of Templar, these... Um, <clears throat> zombie skeletons with no eyes that uh, move really slowly and uh, ride horses most of the time in most of the movies and uh, go, uh, kill their victims, you know, while terrifying them in the in the um, <clears throat> in the process. And they're really, really mysterious and uh, really creepy and uh, unsettling. And I think the I think the um, the Knights of Templar the um, I think it still holds up today. I think they're still really creepy, um, which is awesome. But, uh, yeah, it's basically what the series is about. But they're not, they don't really follow any strict continuity because things uh, don't make sense. Sometimes uh, the Knights of Templar only come out in, at nighttime and they're defeated by sunlight. Otherwise, they're, they're out in the sun. And the only thing that really connects them all is the, like I said, the Knights of Templar uh, themselves. They're in all the movies. And then the fourth one's Night of the Seagulls. Um, oh, this one's also known as Horror of the Zombies. Uh, there's several of the titles for all of these. But uh, this one's Night of the Seagulls and um, the English title. And uh, this is the finale. Um, now, these four films come in a box set. Uh, the Blind Dead Collection looks like a coffin. Uh, it comes with a booklet about the director and everything. But uh, I saved some money. I got these all, all, all four of these for 50 bucks, which is a steal. Because if I wanted to get the, the coffin box and the booklet and everything that all comes with it, I would have had to pay a hundred more dollars. The cheapest one I could find was 150 So I was like, I'm just going to save my money and get these for $50. I just want to have own the movies. I don't need... Uh, the box and the book. It'd be cool to have, but, you know, I'm going to save money. Because 50 bucks is a, is a good price. They've been out of print for years. If they came out a long time ago. Blue Underground did a great job with them, though. Uh, the picture quality could be better, but, uh, yeah, it's all right. It's, uh, I'm just happy to finally own them. Because I think that uh, Ghost Galley and None of the Seagulls weren't available on, uh, in the U.S. Uh, on home video for a long time, to the best of my knowledge. I could be wrong about that, but uh, at least I never saw them on the home video, on VHS or anything. Uh, Alright, yeah, so that's the Blind Dead series. Check these out if you haven't already. They're very, very good. Um, I love Spanish horror, and these are no exception. Um, very creepy, very awesome gothic tone and atmosphere. Uh, so the next thing I got is uh, Prom Night on Blu-ray. I've been wanting this for a while. I love that original uh, VHS cover. Um, I just watched this recently. I think it still holds up really well. Uh, I fell in love with it all over again. It's one of my favorite early 80s slasher films. It's just great. Um, great premise, great characters. Uh, 
great looking killer, even though he's kind of clumsy, but that's okay. Um, so now I have the movie on uh, VHS, DVD. I hate this cover. This is the image. For, this is a still shot from uh, um, H two O Halloween H two O with Laurie Strode looking at Michael Myers through the window. Does it look familiar? I pointed that out in my prom night review. I think. Uh, yeah, care terrible cover. It looks like it's on Photoshop. And so yeah, VHS DVD and of course Blu ray, like I already said. So very happy to finally have this one. Um, Synapse Films always does a good job with their uh, releases, and this is no exception. It comes with a reversible cover, which is pretty cool. Kind of like Scream Factory and Area Video uh, always do. Um, but yeah, Prom Night, one of my favorite slashers, and I'm happy to have it on all three formats. Yeah, I know. I'm, I guess I'm kind of a loser, but <laughs> uh, whatever. All right, so uh, the next thing is um, Creep Show on Blu-ray, released by Scream Factory. Uh, very cool release. Uh, I really like that new artwork and uh, yeah, very good stuff. Happy as in my collection. I've always been a huge fan of the Creep Show movies. Well, the first two anyway. And uh, Tales from the Dark Side of the movie, if that counts. I want to get that on Blu-ray soon too. Uh, yeah, uh, here's the Blu-ray. Um, reversible cover. I always like this. Uh, that's, of course, one of my favorite posters, movie posters of all time. But I always like this uh, kind of comic book uh, looking artwork as well. So, you know, it's pretty cool to have that too. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. And it also comes with a booklet all about Creep Show and um, comics and movies and stuff that inspired it. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy to own this. Um, Creep show. Very, very cool. Um, so yeah, that's that. Oops. And then here's another out of print uh, release. Uh, Creep show two on Blu-ray with uh, another awesome uh, brand new artwork. This is released by Arrow Video, who also did a hell of a job. They're my probably my second favorite Blu-ray distribution company next to Scream Factory, like I already talked about. Um, yeah, also comes with a reversible cover, the original VHS artwork that it's, it's known for. And, uh, loaded with some pretty good special features. Uh, Aero Video always does a great job. Um, but the coolest thing about this release is that, um, well, Creepshow 2 is originally supposed to have five segments, like the first film, and two of them were deleted. The Cat from Hell, which eventually made its way into Tales from the Dark Side of the Movie, and Pinfall, which basically, um, is about, uh, ghostly bowling team. I always thought that'd be it. That was an awesome premise for a uh, uh, story in an anthology. And so this one comes with a booklet about said uh, missing story, Pinfall, A Lost Tale of Horror. How awesome is that? So I'm very happy to own this. I had to get this when I had that, that came with this booklet. This made uh, made me really want to get it. Um, it'd be cool if they made like an animated uh, segment about it or something someday. Uh, but yeah, very happy to end this. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but I plan to very soon. I'll probably do that later today. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. I just thought that made for a cool story. I'm glad to have you happily uh, finally own it in some form. Um, so yeah, very cool release. Very happy to have this, and it is, it is out of print. So uh, if you want to get this, um, you might be willing, might have to be willing to spend a little more. Um, and of course, I also have Creepshow 2 on VHS and uh, DVD, much like with Prom Night. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Can never have too many uh, copies of Creep Show too. Um, and then, last but not least, is Creep Show uh, comic, uh, well, graphic novel type uh, book. Uh, the first one. Um, now, the original uh, version of this book came out in 1982, around the same time that the movie came out. This is actually a reprint that came out in, I want to say, 2013, 2014. Um, so it's not the original release. Oh, 2017. Okay, even more recent. Um, so yeah, it's not the official uh, release, but I don't care. I'm just happy to own it. It's a reprint, but it's still pretty cool. Pretty cool to see a, like a comic version of uh, all these stories when you know the, the Creep Show uh, movies were heavily inspired by comic books themselves, like Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, all that. Um, so yeah, so now we have them in uh, book form. Father's Day, and something to tide you over, and the crate, and all that. All five of them. Yeah. Very happy to have this. Um, yeah, so I don't know if <laughs> this video I think is suffering from creep show overload. You could never have enough creep show, like I already said. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, very happy to have the Creep Show uh, graphic novel and uh, the Creep Show one and two uh, Blu-rays with all their uh, bells and whistles, all the cool stuff they come with. So um, yeah, very happy to own these, and I recommend if you're a fan, you should do the same. They're definitely worth owning. I highly recommend them. Uh, and if you haven't seen Creep, the Creep Show movies for some reason, uh, check them out. The first one's the best. Second one's pretty good, and avoid the third film like a STD, because it freaking sucks. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, all about, love me some creep show. Alright guys, I think I'm going to go pop in one of these bad boys. Have me a little marathon, starting with Tombs of the Blind Dead, which I, again, I recommend these. I recommend all these movies. Um, be sure to let me know some of the cool stuff you got recently in the comics below, comments below. <laughs> I got comics in my brain. Um, and, uh, or make your own video or whatever. Let's uh, talk about some, uh, so the awesome stuff you've uh, obtained in uh, the last few weeks or so. Um, maybe some uh, cool discussion. All right, guys, I'm Hellhound. Thank you for watching uh, my latest Loathsome Lore episode. Uh, this has been the Late Night Spook Show here on the Horror Metal Channel. Until next time, later.